Maple syrup. Maple syrup is a syrup usually made from the xylem sap of sugar maple, red maple, or black maple trees, although it can also be made from other maple species. In cold climates, these trees store starch in their trunks and roots before winter. The starch is then converted to sugar that rises in the sap in late winter and early spring. Maple trees are tapped by drilling holes into their trunks and collecting the exuded sap, which is processed by heating to evaporate much of the water, leaving the concentrated syrup. Maple syrup was first collected and used by the indigenous peoples of North America, and the practice was adopted by European settlers, who gradually refined production methods. Technological improvements in the 1970s further refined syrup processing. The Canadian province of Quebec is by far the largest producer, responsible for 70% of the world's output. Canadian exports of maple syrup in 2016 were 487 million Canadian dollars, about 360 million US dollars, with Quebec accounting for some 90% of this total. Maple syrup is graded according to the Canada, United States, or Vermont scales based on its density and translucency. Sucrose is the most prevalent sugar in maple syrup. In Canada, syrups must be made exclusively from maple sap to qualify as maple syrup and must also be at least 66% sugar. In the United States, a syrup must be made almost entirely from maple sap to be labeled as maple, though states such as Vermont and New York have more restrictive definitions. Maple syrup is often used as a condiment for pancakes, waffles, French toast, oatmeal or porridge. It is also used as an ingredient in baking and as a sweetener or flavoring agent. Culinary experts have praised its unique flavor, although the chemistry responsible is not fully understood. Three species of maple trees are predominantly used to produce maple syrup, the sugar maple, Acer saccharum, the black maple, A. nigrum, and the red maple, A. rubrum, because of the high sugar content, roughly 2 to 5 percent, in the sap of these species. The black maple is included as a subspecies or variety in a more broadly viewed concept of A. saccharum, the sugar maple. By some botanists out of these, the red maple has a shorter season because it buds earlier than sugar in black maples, which alters the flavor of the sap. A few other, but not all, species of maple, Acer, are also sometimes used as sources of sap for producing maple syrup, including the box elder or Manitoba maple Acer nagundo, the silver maple, A. saccharinum, and the big leaf maple, A. macrophyllum. Similar syrups may also be produced from walnut, birch or palm trees, among other sources. Indigenous peoples living in northeastern North America were the first groups known to have produced maple syrup and maple sugar. According to Aboriginal oral traditions, as well as archaeological evidence, maple tree sap was being processed into syrup long before Europeans arrived in the region. There are no authenticated accounts of how maple syrup production and consumption began, but various legends exist. One of the most popular involves maple sap being used in place of water to cook venison served to a chief. Other stories credit the development of maple syrup production to Nanabashiel, Glooscap, or the squirrel. Aboriginal tribes developed rituals around sugar making, celebrating the sugar moon, the first full moon of spring, with a maple dance. Many Aboriginal dishes replace the salt traditional in European cuisine with maple sugar or syrup. The Algonquians recognized maple sap as a source of energy and nutrition. At the beginning of the spring thaw, they used stone tools to make V-shaped incisions in tree trunks. They then inserted reeds or concave pieces of bark to run the sap into buckets, which were often made from birch bark. The maple sap was concentrated either by dropping hot cooking stones into the buckets or by leaving them exposed to the cold temperatures overnight and disposes off the layer of ice that formed on top. In the early stages of European colonization in northeastern North America, local indigenous people showed the arriving colonists how to tap the trunks of certain types off maples during the spring thaw to harvest the sap. Andre the Vet the royal cosmographer of France, wrote about Jacques Cartier drinking maple sap during his Canadian voyages. By 1680, European settlers and fur traders were involved in harvesting maple products. However, rather than making incisions in the bark, the Europeans used the method of drilling tap holes in the trunks with augers. During the 17th and 18th centuries, processed maple sap was used primarily as a source of concentrated sugar, in both liquid and crystallized solid form as cane sugar had to be imported from the West Indies. Maple sugaring parties typically began to operate at the start of the spring thaw in regions of woodland with sufficiently large numbers of maples. Syrup makers first bored holes in the trunks, usually more than one hole per large tree, 
they then inserted wooden spouts into the holes and hung a wooden bucket front protruding end of each spout to collect the sap. The buckets were commonly made by cutting cylindrical segments from a large tree trunk and then hollowing out each segment's core from one end of the cylinder, creating a seamless, watertight container. Sap filled the buckets, and was then either transferred to larger holding vessels, barrels, large pots, or hollowed out wooden logs, often mounted on sledges or wagons pulled by draft animals, or carried in buckets or other convenient containers. The sap collection buckets were returned to the spouts mounted on the trees, and the process was repeated for as long as the flow of sap remained sweet. The specific weather conditions of the thaw period were, and still are, critical in determining the length of the sugaring season. As the weather continues to warm, a maple tree's normal early spring biological process eventually alters the taste of the sap making it unpalatable, perhaps due to an increase in amino acids. The boiling process was very time-consuming. The harvested sap was transported back to the party's base camp, where it was then poured into large vessels, usually made from metal, and boiled to achieve the desired consistency. The sap was usually transported using large barrels pulled by horses or oxen to a central collection point, where it was processed either over a fire built out in the open or inside a shelter built for the purpose, the sugar shack. Around the time of the American Civil War, 1861 to 1865, syrup makers started using large, flat sheet metal pans as they were more efficient for boiling than heavy, rounded iron kettles, because of a greater surface area for evaporation. Around this time, cane sugar replaced maple sugar as the dominant sweetener in the U.S., as a result, producers focused marketing efforts on maple syrup. The first evaporator, used to heat and concentrate sap, was patented in 1858. In 1872, an evaporator was developed that featured two pans and a metal arch or firebox, which greatly decreased boiling time. Around 1900, producers bent the tin that formed the bottom of a pan into a series of flues, which increased the heated surface area of the pan and again decreased boiling time. Some producers also added a finishing pan, a separate batch evaporator, as a final stage in the evaporation process. Buckets began to be replaced with plastic bags, which allowed people to see at a distance how much sap had been collected. Syrup producers also began using tractors to haul vats of sap from the trees being tapped, the sugar bush, to the evaporator. Some producers adopted motor powered tappers and metal tubing systems to convey sap from the tree to a central collection container, but these techniques were not widely used. Heating methods also diversified modern producers use wood, oil, natural gas, propane or steam to evaporate sap. Modern filtration methods were perfected to prevent contamination of the syrup. A large number of technological changes took place during the 1970s. Plastic tubing systems that had been experimental since the early part of the century were perfected, and the sap came directly from the tree to the evaporator house. Vacuum pumps were added to the tubing systems, and preheaters were developed to recycle heat lost in the steam. Producers developed reverse osmosis machines to take a portion of water out of the sap before it was boiled, increasing processing efficiency. Improvements in tubing and vacuum pumps, new filtering techniques, supercharged preheaters, and better storage containers have since been developed. Research continues on pest control and improved woodlot management. In 2009, researchers at the University of Vermont unveiled a new type of tap that prevents backflow off sap into the tree reducing bacterial contamination and preventing the tree from attempting to heal the borehole. Experiments show that it may be possible to use sapling sign a plantation instead of mature trees, dramatically boosting productivity per acre. Open pan evaporation methods have been streamlined since colonial days, but remain basically unchanged. Sap must first be collected and boiled down to obtain pure syrup without chemical agents or preservatives. Maple syrup is made by boiling between 20 and 50 volumes of sap depending on its concentration, over an open fire until one volume of syrup is obtained, usually at a temperature over the boiling point of water. As the boiling point of water varies with changes in air pressure the correct value for pure water is determined at the place where the syrup is being produced, each time evaporation is begun in periodically throughout the day. Syrup can be boiled entirely over one heat source or can be drawn off into smaller batches and boiled at a more controlled temperature. Boiling the syrup is a tightly controlled process, which ensures appropriate sugar content. Syrup boiled too long will eventually crystallize, whereas underboiled syrup will be watery, and will quickly spoil. The finished syrup has a density of 66 degrees on the Brick scale, a hydrometric scale used to measure sugar solutions. 
The syrup is then filtered to remove sugar sand, crystals made up largely of sugar and calcium malate. These crystals are not toxic, but create a gritty texture in tea syrup if not filtered out. In addition to open pan evaporation methods, many large producers use the more fuel-efficient reverse osmosis procedure to separate the water from the sap. The higher the sugar content of the sap, the smaller the volume of sap is needed to obtain the same amount of syrup. 57 units of sap with 1.5% sugar content will yield 1 unit of syrup, but only 25 units of sap with a 3.5% sugar content are needed to obtain 1 unit of syrup. The sap's sugar content is highly variable and will fluctuate even within the same tree. The filtered syrup is grated and packaged while still hot, usually at a temperature of or greater. The containers are turned over after being sealed to sterilize the cap with the hot syrup. Packages can be made of metal, glass, or coated plastic, depending on volume and target market. The syrup can also be heated longer and further processed to create a variety of other maple products, including maple sugar, maple butter or cream, and maple candy or taffy. Off flavors can sometimes develop during the production of maple syrup, resulting from contaminants in the boiling apparatus, such as disinfectants, microorganisms, fermentation products, metallic and flavors, and buddy sap, an off flavor occurring late in the syrup season when tree budding has begun. In some circumstances, it is possible to remove off flavors through processing. Maple syrup production is centered in northeastern North America, however, given the correct weather conditions, it can be made wherever suitable species of maple trees grow. A maple syrup production farm is called a sugar bush or sugar wood. Sap is often boiled in a sugar house, also known as a sugar shack, sugar shanty, or cabana sucre, a building louvered at the top to vent the steam from the boiling sap. Maples are usually tapped beginning at 30 to 40 years of age. Each tree can support between 1 and 3 taps, depending on its trunk diameter. The average maple tree will produce of sap per season, up to per day. This is roughly equal to 7% of its total sap. Seasons last for 4 to 8 weeks, depending on the weather. During the day, starch stored in the roots for the winter rises through the trunk as sugary sap, allowing it to be tapped. Sap is not tapped at night because the temperature drop inhibits sap flow, although taps are typically left in place overnight. Some producers also tap in autumn, though this practice is less common than spring tapping. Maples can continue to be tapped for sap until they are over 100 years old. Until the 1930s, the United States produced most of the world's maple syrup. Today, after rapid growth in the 1990s, Canada produces more than 80% of the world's maple syrup, producing about in 2016. The vast majority of this comes from the province of Quebec, which is the world's largest producer, with about 70% of global production. As of 2016, Quebec had some 7,300 producers working with 13,500 farmers collectively making over of syrup. Production in Quebec is controlled through a supply management system, with producers receiving quota allotments from the Fédération of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers, Fédération des Producteurs Acericoles du Québec, FPAC, which also maintains reserves of syrup, although there is a black market trade in Quebec product. In 2017, the FPAC mandated increased output of maple syrup production, attempting to establish Quebec's dominance in the world market. Canada exported more than 362 million Canadian dollars of maple syrup in 2016. The provinces of Ontario, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island produced smaller amounts of syrup. The Canadian provinces of Manitoba and Saskatchewan produce maple syrup using the sap of the box elder or Manitoba maple, Acer Nagundo. A Manitoba maple tree's yield is usually less than half that of a similar sugar maple tree. Manitoba maple syrup has a slightly different flavor from sugar maple syrup, because it contains less sugar and the tree's sap flows more slowly. British Columbia is home to a growing maple sugar industry using sap from the big leaf maple, which is native to the west coast of the United States and Canada. Vermont is the biggest U.S. producer, with over during the 2013 season, followed by New York with and Maine with Wisconsin, Ohio, New Hampshire, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Massachusetts, and Connecticut all produced marketable quantities of maple syrup of less than each in 2013. As of 2003, Vermont produced about 5.5% of the global syrup supply. Maple syrup has been produced on a small scale in some other countries, notably Japan and South Korea. However, in South Korea in particular, it is traditional to consume maple sap, called goroso, 
instead of processing it into syrup. In 2015, 64% of Canadian maple syrup exports went to the United States, a value of 229 million Canadian dollars, 8% to Germany, 31 million Canadian dollars, 6% to Japan, 26 million Canadian dollars, and 5% to the United Kingdom, 16 million Canadian dollars. Under Canadian maple product regulations, containers of maple syrup must include the words maple syrup, its grade name and net quantity in liters or milliliters, on the main display panel with a minimum font size of 1.6 millimeters. If the maple syrup is of Canada grade A level, the name of the color class must appear on the label in both English and French. Also, the lot number or production code, and either, 1, the name and address of the sugar bush establishment, packing or shipper establishment, or, 2. The first dealer and the registration number of the packing establishment, must be labeled on any display panel other than the bottom. Following an effort from the International Maple Syrup Institute, IMSI, and many maple syrup producer associations, both Canada and the United States have altered their laws regarding the classification of maple syrup to be uniform. Whereas in the past each state or province had their own laws on the classification of maple syrup, now those laws define a unified grading system. This had been a work in progress for several years, and most of the finalization of the new grading system was made in 2014. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency, CFIA, announced in the Canada Gazette on June 28, 2014 that rules for the sale of maple syrup would be amended to include new descriptors, at the request of the MC. As of December 31, 2014, the CFIA and as of March 2, 2015, the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, Agricultural Marketing Service issued revised standards intended to harmonize Canada-United States regulations on the classification of maple syrup as follows. As long as maple syrup does not have an off flavor, is of a uniform color, and is free from turbidity and sediment, it can be labeled as one of the A grades. If it exhibits any problems, it does not meet grade A requirements and then must be labeled as processing grade maple syrup and may not be sold in containers smaller than 5 gallons. If maple syrup does not meet the requirements of processing grade maple syrup, including a fairly characteristic maple taste, it is classified as substandard. This grading system was accepted and made law by most maple producing states and provinces, and became compulsory in Canada as of December 13, 2016.Vermont. In an effort to youngstart the new grading regulations, adopted the new grading system as of January 1, 2014, after the grade changes passed the Senate and House in 2013. Maine passed a bill to take effect as soon as both Canada and the United States adopted the new grades. In New York, the new grade changes became law on January 1, 2015. New Hampshire did not require legislative approval and so the new grade laws became effective as of December 16, 2014 and producer compliance was required as of January 1, 2016. Golden and amber grades typically have a milder flavor than dark and very dark, which are both dark and have an intense maple flavor. The darker grades of syrup are used primarily for cooking and baking, although some specialty dark syrups are produced for table use. Syrup harvested earlier in the season tends to yield the lighter color. With the new grading system, the classification of maple syrup depends ultimately on its internal transmittance at 560 nanometers wavelength through a 10 millimeters sample. Golden has to have 75% or more transmittance, amber has to have 50.0 to 74.9% transmittance, dark has to have 25.0 to 49.9% transmittance, and very dark is any product less than 25.0% transmittance. In Canada, Maple syrup was classified prior to December 31, 2014, by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, CFIA, as one of three grades, each with several color classes. Producers in Ontario or Quebec may have followed either federal or provincial grading guidelines. Quebec's and Ontario's guidelines differed slightly from the federal. A typical year's yield for a maple syrup producer will be about 25 to 30 percent of each of the number one colors, 10 percent number two amber and 2% number 3 dark. The United States used, some states still do, as they await state regulation, different grading standards. Maple syrup was divided into two major grades. In Massachusetts, the grade B was renamed as grade A very dark, strong taste. The Vermont Agency of Agriculture Food and Markets used a similar grading system of color, and is roughly equivalent, especially for lighter syrups, but using letters, AA, A, 
etc. The Vermont grading system differed from the U.S. system in maintaining a slightly higher standard of product density, measured one thumb scale. New Hampshire maintained a similar standard, but not a separate state grading scale. The Vermont graded product had 0.9% more sugar and less water in its composition than U.S. graded. One grade of syrup not for table use, called commercial or grade C, was also produced under the Vermont system. In Canada, the packing of maple syrup must follow the packing conditions stated in the maple products regulations, or utilize the equivalent Canadian or imported grading system. As stated in the maple products regulations, Canadian maple syrup can be classified as Canadian grade A and Canadian processing grade. Any maple syrup container under these classifications should be filled to at least 90% of the bottle size while still containing the net quantity of syrup product as stated in the label. Every container of maple syrup must be new if it has a capacity of 5 liters or less or is marked with a grade name. Every container of maple sugar must also be new if it has a capacity of less than 5 kilograms or is either exported out of Canada or conveyed from one province to another. Each maple syrup product must be verified clean if it follows a grade name or if it is exported out of the province in which it was originally manufactured. The basic ingredient in maple syrup is the sap from the xylem of sugar maple or various other species of maple trees. It consists primarily of sucrose and water, with small amounts of the monosaccharides glucose and fructose from the invert sugar created in the boiling process. In a 100 grams amount, maple syrup provides 260 calories and is composed of 32% water by weight, 67% carbohydrates, 90% of which are sugars, and no appreciable protein or fat table. Maple syrup is generally low in overall micronutrient content, although manganese and riboflavin are at high levels along with moderate amounts of zinc and calcium, right table. It also contains trace amounts of amino acids which increase in content as sap flow occurs. Maple syrup contains a wide variety of volatile organic compounds, including vanillin, hydroxybutanone, and propionaldehyde. It is not yet known exactly what compounds are responsible for maple syrup's distinctive flavor, however, its primary flavor contributing compounds are maple furanone, strawberry furanone, and maltol. New compounds have been identified in maple syrup, one of which is quebecol, a natural phenolic compound created when the maple sap is boiled to create syrup. One author described maple syrup as a unique ingredient, smooth and silky textured, with a sweet, Distinctive flavor, hints of caramel with overtones of toffee will not do, and a rare color, amber satellite. Maple flavor is, well, maple flavor, uniquely different from any other. Agriculture Canada has developed a flavor wheel that details 91 unique flavors that can be present in maple syrup. These flavors are divided into 13 families vanilla, empyreumatic, burnt, milky, fruity, floral, spicy, foreign, deterioration or fermentation foreign, environment, maple, confectionery, plant, herbaceous, plant, forest, humus or cereals, and plant, ligneous. These flavors are evaluated using a procedure similar to wine tasting. Other culinary experts praise its unique flavor. Maple syrup and its various artificial imitations are widely used as toppings for pancakes, waffles, and French toast in North America. They can also be used to flavor a variety of foods, including fritters, ice cream, hot cereal, fresh fruit, and sausages. It is also used as sweetener for granola, applesauce, baked beans, candied sweet potatoes, winter squash, cakes, pies, breads, tea, coffee, and hot dotties. Maple syrup can also be used as a replacement for honey and wine, meat. In Canada, maple syrup must be made entirely from maple sap, and syrup must have a density of 66 degrees on the BRICS scale to be marketed as maple syrup. In the United States, maple syrup must be made almost entirely from maple sap, although small amounts of substances such as salt may be added. Labeling laws prohibit imitation syrups from having maple in their names unless the finished product contains 10% or more of natural maple syrup. Maple flavored syrups include maple syrup, but may contain additional ingredients. Pancake syrup, waffle syrup, table syrup, and similarly named syrups are re-substitutes which are less expensive than maple syrup. In these syrups, the primary ingredient is most often high fructose corn syrup flavored with citalin, they have a little genuine maple content, and are usually thickened above the viscosity of maple syrup. Imitation syrups are generally cheaper than maple syrup, with less natural flavor. In the United States, 
consumers generally prefer imitation syrups, likely because of the significantly lower cost and sweeter flavor. They typically cost about $8 per gallon, whereas authentic maple syrup costs $40 to $60 per gallon 2015 prices. In 2016, maple syrup producers from nine U.S. states petitioned the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, to regulate labeling of products containing maple syrup or uses the word maple in manufactured products, indicating that imitation maple products contain insignificant amounts of natural maple syrup. In September 2016, the FDA published a consumer advisory to carefully inspect the ingredient list of products labeled as maple. Maple products are considered emblematic of Canada, in particular Quebec, and are frequently sold in tourist shops and airports as souvenirs from Canada. The sugar maple's leaf has come to symbolize Canada, and is depicted on the country's flag. Several U.S. states, including West Virginia, New York, Vermont, and Wisconsin, have the sugar maple as their state tree. A scene of sap collection is depicted on the Vermont State Quarter, issued in 2001. Maple syrup and maple sugar were used during the American Civil War and by abolitionists in the years before the war because most cane sugar and molasses were reproduced by southern slaves. Because of food rationing during the Second World War, people in the northeastern United States were encouraged to stretch their sugar rations by sweetening foods with maple syrup and maple sugar, and recipe books were printed to help housewives employ this alternative source. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.